All right, folks, welcome to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you move from paycheck to purpose. You know you want more than just money. You want some meaning. You want more than a solid, even great income. You want to make a great impact. This is true of all of us. This is what we help you do here on the Ken Coleman Show. So excited to have you with us, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. Hey, follow me on Instagram, on the gram. We're growing. We're blowing up over there, and we give you daily content. How about Facebook? Search the Ken Coleman Show on Facebook. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn. So join us on social media as well. KenColeman.com is the website where you can get tons of free resources that we offer you. Um, and there's some great stuff over there. The get hired guides, the should I quit my job quiz. Uh, we get resume templates. Uh, we've got articles, free, super discounted stuff, all tools that you can put in your tool belt and use effectively. 844-747-2577. Okay. So for months now I've been telling you, and I'll tell you again, uh, in moments, why I partner with ZipRecruiter.com? Because the job hunt is exhausting. It's different than it was 20 years ago. It just is. Different than it was 10 years ago, 5 years ago. Here's what I'm hearing. Read an article the other day. 10 million qualified candidates didn't even get seen because of automated resume software and the filtering software because there's so many jobs now. So many applicants. And companies just can't. It's not the old days where you mailed in a resume or you showed up at the reception desk and said, hey, here's my resume. I actually remember doing that in my 20s. Doesn't happen anymore. So all of this complexity leads to mental and emotional exhaustion. Ken, I sent 20 resumes yesterday. Didn't hear anything. Over the last six weeks, I've submitted hundreds of resumes. Hardly heard anything. Didn't even get an interview. I get that call. So I want to address that very briefly today to, to, to open the show because it is mentally and emotionally exhausting. So what do you do when you keep hearing crickets? Well, a couple things. You do go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken today. I'm not saying they're going to give you the exact gig, but they're going to get some activity going for you. They're going to get you some interviews. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. It's free to you. They match your profile and your resume up to gigs that make sense. They keep giving you updates. Okay, I endorse them because it's a free service. I'm not asking you to buy anything. Shut up. All right, so first of all, are we doing the right things? Are we using the proximity principle? Are we getting around people that are doing what we want to do? Are we getting in places where that work is happening? Are we putting ourselves strategically and consistently in the right places and around the right people? That's another technique. Yeah, I know you're emo emotionally and mentally exhausted, but you can keep showing up. But you submitting a bunch of resumes and sitting around at your cube waiting for somebody to bite on the hook is just not working. That's why we're talking about it. All right, so those are the things you need to be doing as it relates to the right strategy. Stop doing the nonsensical stuff. I mean, for this matter, you might as well go, you know what? I'm going to stop work altogether. I'm going to take all my remaining money. I'm going to go to the slot machines in Jersey or Vegas and sit there all day long and put the coins in and hit the button. Come on. Same exact strategy. It's, it's ludicrous. You wouldn't do it with your money. You're not, why are you doing it with your professional prospects? All right. That, that's what you need to be doing. But you also need to take a bit of a break. A mental break and go, wait a second. I haven't made traction. Why haven't I made traction? Because I'm not doing the right things. I just addressed what you need to be doing. Connecting with people. Connecting, connecting, connecting with real people. Tell them what you're looking for. Do you know anybody over here that you could connect me to? Or would they be willing to vouch for me based on you? And then take a break. Stop doing what you've been doing and take a mental break. I don't care how long it is. Just go, you know what? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself out there for possible rejection? Because you know there's a destination. It matters. You've got to remind yourself of the why. It's what keeps us going, right? I talk about this all the time. You can submit resumes all you want to, persist, 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 and if you're doing it the wrong way, which you are, You'll quit. You'll burn out on it. 
But if you do it the right way, then you can guarantee that it's eventually going to work. And now you got to exhibit patience. The only way we can summon the patience, which will then allow us to develop the discipline of patience, is to have our eyes on our why. Why am I doing this? Why am I pivoting? Why am I putting myself out there? If you're doing it on purpose, which is what we talk about on this show, then there's a desired future, a destination that is worth all of this. But if you just do stupid, bad strategies and get stupid, bad, predictable results and then get discouraged, you won't persist. But if you do good strategies that you know will pay off and you keep your eye on your why, then you will have the patience to stick with it and then the opportunity will pop. It's just that simple. So that's what you do when you're emotionally Exhausted and ready to quit the job search process. Reset. And I just told you how. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Jocko, who joins us in Pretoria, South Africa. This is fun. Jocko, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Good afternoon, Ken. This is Jocko speaking. How are you? I am living the dream. What's going on with you today? I can. I'm very, very happy to speak to you guys. Are doing a great job. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Ken, this is no, really, that's an understatement. You're doing an amazing job. <laughs> really, you are. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you. Um, there is a feedback follow-up call. Um, so my question is: um, so um, how do I ensure that I keep two jobs at the same time? And how do I keep two bosses happy at the same time? Different companies. Are they I both really full-time to, uh, jobs? Yeah. So the one is, um, can I give you the back- background? Well, okay. we, we don't have a ton of time. We're going to be up against a commercial break. That's and fine. so so let me ask you this. Are they both yeah. aware of each yeah. other? Are they aware that they, are they both uh, aware that you have another full-time job? Okay. 50% yes. But one I can do remotely, and the other one I can do full-time, and they're not in the same industry. I understand, but are they both aware that you are working another full-time job? Only 50, only, only one of them knows 100% well, that I'm working. I, I, but you're I calling am, me because I think that you're feeling the pressure, and you're in danger of not being able to spin both of these plates, correct? Um. Not really, because the one is ending. I've got. I'm busy handing over. Oh and well, then while then, I'm handing over. Well, then I don't think that's that big of an issue. Is, yeah. Okay. So here's my okay. answer on this. It really is simple. Yeah. If you were trying to keep both happy and work both at the same time, eventually that's going to end poorly, and I would never give anybody advice to chase two rabbits. You lose both of them. Because one is ending, and this is a transitionary period, then I'm fine with it, and it doesn't seem like there's a fire. So yes, only because you're moving into one. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, bringing purpose to talk radio, 844-747-2577. Hey, if you're new to the show, you've been listening, or you've been listening for a while, and you're going, hey, I, uh, I'm i in. I, uh, I believe that you need a little bit more motivation than just listening. The new book is From Paycheck to Purpose. This is the seven stages that I talk about here on the program. I coach people through. And uh, now's the time to make the move. If you've ever been wondering about the side hustle launch, getting qualified to pivot into something like technology, working with our friends at Bethel Tech, and you're gonna, you just want that game plan, the clear path. It is from paycheck to purpose, the clear path to doing work you love. Available right now, and this is the resource. I'm not just pitching you a biography. It's not a biography. It's the resource. Uh, so jump on that, KenColeman.com. Great bundles there as well. All right, to the phones we go. Los Angeles, California. Uh, Joe, you are on the Ken Coleman Show. Yes, sir. How's it going, Ken? Joe, I'm living the dream. What are you doing? 
Good, good. I am on my way in All my right. dream, hopefully. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yeah, I am 30, and um, I've been listening to you and Dave for um, several months now. Mm-hmm. And um, single, well, not married, no kids or anything. And um, I'm really just trying to nail down an end goal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've done the uh, Get Clear career assessment. Um, I've done the DISC assessment and, and all the all the tests that you have available. Okay. Um, so I've done all that, and it's been amazing, super helpful, um, very on point. But um, I think because I am a very, very creative person, and um, I, had a, I have a lot of different ideas um, of what I want to do and different businesses, that I want to have, like, I'm just really having a hard time, like narrowing down an end goal okay, great. or if I want, if I want to do multiple things, like, I don't know how to, like, just don't know how to get there. Okay. Let's narrow it down mm-hmm. so that we can figure out our destination. Then we figure out the path. Sure. Okay. So I'm glad you called. Yeah. So let's give me the top two or three things. And, and I just got to believe there's a clear leader in the clubhouse. This just got to be. If there's not, I want the top two. So tell me, what are we narrowing down? Okay. Um, well, I've been in the specialty coffee world for uh, about six years, and I think that is where everything comes together the most when it comes to what I'm good at, what I enjoy. Okay. Um, so I think managing or owning a coffee shop is the closest to my sweet spot. Great. Um, but the, probably the next thing, uh, of the, so that would be, you know, one or two. And then probably the next thing would be clothing. Um, so doing like, um, clothing design and manufacturing. Okay. Tell me more about the clothing design. If we were, if, if I was your business coach right now, I said, okay, great. We're going to launch this thing, but we're only Mm going to start with one product. We're going to start slow Mm -hmm. and simple and we're going to learn something from this. We're not going to, you know, invest all this money. What would mm-hmm. the article of clothing be? If I forced you to start with one thing, what would it be? Um, yeah, it would easily for sure be um, just like denim jeans. Okay, great. And just fantastic, denim Fantastic. And uh, what would be your unique design proposition on a pair of jeans? Um, I mean, I think it would just be pulling um different approaches together so you have kind of like the commodity approach and then you have like the designer approach and then you have um like the just high high quality kind of like the heritage great um, okay so you've already answered enough for me so i'm trying to move this along mm -hmm. i just wanted to know how much thought you had put into this and and your answer on that was fantastic is there anything that's close to the coffee and the jeans thing anything remotely close are they way off these other ideas that you feel haunted by? Um, you mean like the separate ideas? Yeah, you said you got all these ideas and you're trying to narrow them mm-hmm. down. I just think that these are probably the top two. Is there anything close to those two? Um, yeah, the only other things that I really want to do and that I'm good at um, are YouTube, like um, vlogging, and then also um, music. So I've been okay. kind of like so I've here's- been music- Great. So here's what I hear. Make money before. Yeah. You're a highly Mm -hmm. creative guy. You just are creative, 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 and you need to be creating. What we have to determine Mm -hmm. is, is, is as we look at this right now, how much of this will be hobby level creation and how much of this will be professional level creation. Right. And I'm going to suggest to you that if you were wanted to get it into roasting your own coffee, eventually having a shop, because that's an expensive proposition, right? Mm, but right. you could start roasting coffee and build a small, you know, base of people and then, you know, maybe have a coffee cart. I don't know. You understand all this is probably better than I do. But sure. the coffee thing is a creative thing. It really is. Mm, it is yeah. a environment when you talk coffee shop. And then it is a uh, connoisseur when we talk about the actual coffee itself. That is a creative element. That is a creative role. The jeans, designing jeans, same thing. To me, you can do both. You may not do them both at the same time, or you may not do them both at the same time at the same 
speed. Make sense? Mm. Yeah. But the guy who's trying to get his coffee business up and going could also design jeans at night. Mm-hmm. He could do a prototype and just kind of start small and do the same thing. You know, the guy who's doing all that, if he wanted to have a YouTube channel that was focusing on, uh, you know, coffee and making it and all that kind of thing, that'd be great. Um, or right. if you wanted to do a fun video blog where it was called, and I'm making this up and you may roll your eyes and get embarrassed, but I'm showing you the creativity here. But if you wanted to do a okay. thing called jeans and Java or Java and jeans, Okay. Yeah. I don't know where you're going to take this. I know how cheesy that sounded, but I'm trying to show you that you feel like you've got to pick one and only one and stick with one the rest of your life as opposed to going, wait a second, are all three of these things in my sweet spot where I can use my talent, what I do best, to do work I love, passion, to produce results that matter to me, mission? I think the jeans and the coffee for sure. And I think the YouTube is super easy. That's just a function. Or are you talking about something that's in your sweet spot? That's what would make YouTube work. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now on the music thing, I don't know. I don't know if you're good enough and I'm never going to be able to assess whether or not you're good enough to make money doing music, but that could also be a creative hobby that gives you enough juice to maybe rest your brain from coffee and jeans. So Mm -hmm. you've got to stop thinking and start doing. So I think if it's coffee, then I think you working for a coffee maker, working in the coffee industry for as long as you can, uh, saving up money, learning the business, what's right, what's wrong, what's missing, what's confused. You got the chance to get paid to become an expert. Do you track with me on that? Yeah. All yeah, right. While you're doing that, you can be launching your jeans design on the side. In 2021, right. there's nothing keeping you from going to find a a, a, a manufacturer of jeans, cutting a deal mm-hmm. and go, hey, I want to launch one line of jeans. I'm going to do it for dudes or whatever, whoever you're designing for, and do one thing of jeans and start selling it on your own online and see what happens. See if you've got what it takes by people actually right. wanting to buy what you're doing. That's not a huge amount of money. You're not launching some billion-dollar business. You're just kind of wading into the water. I'd like to see you do that, pursue both of those paths right now. How does that sound? I think that's been, like, my general plan. I know. I you think- just needed permission. Well, I think, I think what, what, um, it's two things I think that, that I kind of get worried about. Tell is, me real quick. Cause we're well, about out of time. What are the two things? Uh, number one, I just have fear of missing out. So like if I'm focusing more on one than the other, or I, I'm not doing one of the, what's one the second or, one. Um, and then the other thing is just financially, like I just, you know, I'm just not where I want to be. I understand. So if you've got to work a better day job and launch the coffee roasting on the side, do that. You got to choose, but you can do this. Putting the mo back in Mondays. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I tested that out, I don't know how long ago. I was talking to some young people in the hallways here at Ramsey Solutions. They're like, what do you mean by the mo? Like, are you kidding me? I got the mo. I don't even know what it is. Joe, if I say put the mo in Mondays, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Amanda, I'm going to suggest that you probably do as well. I do indeed. Yeah, and Alex, he doesn't like to talk as much. Yes. Uh, I, I, maybe an idea. An idea. You had an a general idea. idea. Like Mo Money? Like Mo mm. Money, Mo Problems type stuff? No? Oh, no. Okay. Mo is in like a little bit more, little mojo. Mojo. Short for mojo. Do, you know what I mean? It's interesting. Interesting. I'm just telling you. I say things like that instinctively and then I go, well, you got a bunch of the audience that has no idea what he's talking about. So I clarify. I don't think you did. And that's okay. Alex is younger. Joe... We've been together a long time. Yes, we have. And I feel like we're getting older. It's now, it just occurs to me, we're getting older. Yeah, and everybody and, else is getting younger. And my references are going to have to be, I'm going to have to tighten them up. 
I, I, and I am, folks, I'm real time. I'm just, I'm coming to grips with it. If everybody would just give me a second. Thank you very much. Okay, we're ready. 844-747-2577. Elizabeth joins us now in Las Vegas, Nevada. Elizabeth, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Um, thank you, Mr. Coleman, you for taking my call. You bet. Um, I guess it's kind of a two-part uh, question, uh-huh. um, short-term, long-term. Um, I'm a nurse, and um, I currently work for a government agency, and I'm deciding not to take the COVID vaccine. Mm-hmm. So I'm sort of pre-planning, not in a fearful way, just to be proactive. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an opportunity to try um, a remote type position, um, but it's a 1099, and that makes me a little uncomfortable, but I'm kind of I'm happy to try something new. What makes you a, uncomfortable about the 1099? Um, I'm used to having um, benefits and mm-hmm. all the additional stuff, the, a little bit more of the security. Um, you know, Are you single? Condition. I know. I am married. Um, Could you be on your so husband's benefits? I'm curr- and I am currently on his, on his plan. Oh, yeah. well then... You see what I just did there? You told me there was yeah. a monster under the bed, and I just crawled under the bed, and I said, "Hey, Elizabeth, great news! There's no monster under the bed." Yeah, you don't. It's not the benefits. I, I think you. I think you feel like if I'm salaried, they're more committed to me than if I'm on a contract, or the 1099 feels very temporary. Let's just be honest. Um, it, and I think honestly, it is temporary in my mind. I well, think. good. Yeah. So embrace think, it. Yeah. Um, it's not a okay. long-term play for it's, you either, right? It's not a long-term. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. And, and here's the I deal. I, are you not or are you not in demand and very valuable? I am. I think if I'm thinking about purpose, my main long-term goal is that I'm in some kind of a position where I'm helping people, but I can still potentially work from home or be able to take care of my son and kind of have my, my, my family and my, my children um, at the basis of that where they can I love kind that. Of what would that look like? I, do you mind if we go there? I know you didn't call me yeah, for that exact no, reason, no, but you I, knew I, I was going to do this. Yeah. Um, I, I've thought about it. You know, I have multiple ideas. Um, you know, I love working outdoors. I'm a huge proponent of that. I like it. I like uh-huh. gardening. Um, once I became a mom, I realized that there was a huge community um, need for community in the sense of counseling, mentoring, health, exercise. So I was sort of playing with the idea of like creating something like mommy and me, family and me sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't, know if I really want to have a business either because okay. I've never done that and I okay. like nursing. Okay, so um, I like the service part of nursing. Okay, I love that. There's no question. You just are a people person. That that's yeah. you 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 are about serving people. I think there's some influence in there too. Um, let me ask you this financially. Um, if you didn't try to make it this big business, mm-hmm. but you tried the mommy and me or family and me or whatever, or you started a group where you were doing some online coaching or in-person coaching and they were doing yoga or exercise or whatever. I don't know. Or you had them over and you were doing recipes with healthy food. I don't know. I'm just brainstorming. Whatever it is you're thinking about. And you didn't have to have a full-time income. I mean, is that a reality for you guys? Are you going to need to be generating a certain amount of money that you have been generating for the near future? Um. I think in the next two years, our mortgage will be able to pay off. Um, so, like, in theory, financially, it wouldn't be such a huge co- concerning factor. I think that's I think that's the play. I love this yeah. timeline. You have two years to dream and experiment a little bit. Yeah. I, I think my advice, let me think through this for just two seconds. I think you take the contracting job because it's, it's money in hand right now, good money. And you do it until you go, well, eh, knew the next thing. And if you have to just bounce a little bit in this nursing space, um, I would be trying some of these ideas you've had. Very small mm-hmm. scale. Try them. Yeah, I was kind of thinking I can maybe reach out to companies I've sort of come across that I just haven't contacted directly. Because mm-hmm. I found, especially during COVID, um, I was pregnant, gave birth, and it was I didn't have the community yeah. other than on the online, and it was kind of important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I kind of Super needed it. important. So, who, what would you contact these companies about? Um, just I would uh, 
probably to go try out their services just to see kind of what they did so I can even get ideas about what I feel is needed. Okay, good. I love that. So we're experimenting, we're exploring. That's, I think, your theme. Experiment, explore. Potential small little business ideas to where you're at home with the kiddos, but your heart is still engaged. Your heart's going to be overflowing. I'm speaking this over you right now. What you've just outlined is your future. You're at home a lot more than you have been. You're there. It's your home base, the kiddos and everything. But you've got this thing on the side, and we're not worried about how much money it generates. There's no pressure to build. I'm just doing what I love. And maybe I'm just yeah. I'm figuring out how I want to pour into women, whether it be health, nutrition, serving. You know, that nurse in you is is... You, you even mentioned counseling, which I think is so interesting. Maybe it's mentoring young moms. I don't know. You know, the nurse, what I love about nurses, um, and I've had some great experience with nurses with my kids being in surgery and me having some surgeries. I haven't had a ton, but I, I've had to, enough to where I go, boy, the nurse is such a huge role. And, and the nurse is the comforter. The nurse is the counselor. That's what I think of a good nurse, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. They administer, they take care, they're kind of making sure everything's going well. But boy, they just make me feel com- boy, the doctor when the doctor walks in, I'm scared. When the nurse walks in, I go, "Oh. Am I right or am I wrong? Tell me if I'm wrong." That's how it should be. Absolutely. Well, that's who you are. Yeah. I think whatever this thing is going to be, it needs to have a combination of the counselor/advisor/comforter/caregiver. Yeah. Anything that fits that for you, that's your jam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm so excited. Thanks for letting me dive in a little bit. Uh, I, <laughs> I think I think going forward, you take the contractor job. Take as many as you need to until mm-hmm. we get the mortgage paid off or whatever. Be free. Be relaxed. And then the minute that mortgage is paid off and it's a whole different financial situation, then just start to ease into the things you've already experimented and explored with. And I think it's going to become very obvious to you in the near future. Thank you so much for the call. I love it. See, this is a situation, folks, where Elizabeth has just got to completely listen to her heart. She has the freedom to do so. So she's got time. Yeah, it needs to work for about two more years or so. But she's got time and no pressure And so now she can just listen to her heart. What do I want to do? Maybe I want to do a garden. Maybe I want to start a community garden in my neighborhood. We sell some money on this. Maybe Who knows? Who knows which way she's going to go? But she gets to explore all these different ideas without the pressure. This is ultimately what I want for everybody. This is why at Ramsey Solutions, when we talk about financial peace and living on purpose, they all come together. Because when you have the peace and you have the options and the freedom to do what it is that you were created to do, oh, baby, it's so much more fun. Without that pressure, purpose gets revealed a lot quicker. Don't move. More of your calls coming up. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you move from paycheck to purpose. Uh, If you're right now thinking about a bigger paycheck and a more purposeful job, well, now is the time. My friends at ZipRecruiter told me there were over 52% more jobs posted online this summer than there were back prior to the pandemic in January, February of 2020. Goodness gracious, 10.4 million jobs is the exact number right now, the latest job report. Uh, and this is where my friends at ZipRecruiter can help. They're the number one, one, number one rated job site in the U.S., and their service is free. They are your personal recruiter. They do the hard work of finding jobs that are a great fit, and they present you to employers. They also give you updates when they like your profile and ask for your contact info, and they put them directly in touch with you. This is taking the stress out of job hunting. So what are you waiting for? If you want an easier job search, sign up for free today. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Folks, this is a free service. What? How are we not getting everybody that hears this to go, who's looking, going, I'm going to go and just take a snoop. ZipRecruiter.com. 
slash Ken. All right, we're going to stay on this topic. Oh, my goodness. We had a caller the other day on the show uh, who was driving for uh, the post office. Didn't like it. Felt like she was limited. Do you remember this call? Had I known this headline, I would have given it to her. Let's dive into this in the news. Okay, so I saw this and I was like, are you kidding me? Headline from CNN Business. Wanted. Now, I want to tell you something, folks. I'm slowly reading this because I don't want you to think that I've missed the number. Wanted 80,000 truck drivers to help fix the supply chain. 80,000 drivers is the shortage in the supply chain trucking industry. Chris Spears, the president and CEO of the American Trucking Association. This is what he's saying. That's a 30% increase from before the pandemic, where there was already a labor shortage of 61,000 drivers. Whoa! Spears said that's a pretty big spike. Many drivers are retiring or dropping out of the industry. Now, Joe, we've had some calls uh, in the last six months where we've had drivers going, I, I got to get out. Can't do it. So there is uh, clearly people that are jumping out. Family. I mean, this is, listen, let's just call this what this is. Um, if you're a family man or woman, uh, this can be really hard on you. Uh, if you're a family man or a woman, but you your family's at a place and, and you guys are where you can do this, then this is a great opportunity. Can I tell you something? If you are single um, uh, or uh, newlywed, married, and you don't have to log, you know, insane hours, because some of these trucking jobs are better than others. But if you can do this relationally or you're single and you're trying to make some money, and you enjoy kind of being on your own, not in an office, you like driving, I'd be looking at this. Huge demand. Um, and, and, and boy, now is the time to say, hey, I'm interested. The training does take some time, but they're ready to fast track that. The federal government's getting involved to make uh, 18-year-olds eligible. I don't know how I feel about 18-year-olds driving 18-wheelers, though. I I don't know if that makes me an old fuddy-duddy or not. Uh, But I just wanted to share this very quick because um, if you're you're just looking for something stable or if this feels like the dream job to you, where you, hey, I got my autonomy, I can listen to audio books, I can talk to friends and family, I like being out on the open road. Boy, the demand right now is huge. Uh, truck drivers are moving 71% of the U.S. economy's goods. Wow. So there's a huge need right now. So there you go. And and I would also tell those who are listening, I would also be looking locally, too, for delivery jobs, you know, that don't require open road gone all the time. Uh, I, I, I just think if that's your jam, you like driving and you kind of like being alone, boy, that's... And you're important. You're making people happy when you show up. Believe me, if Joe doesn't get his toilet paper, he is not a happy camper. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Rachel is there. Rachel, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How Hi. are you? I'm living the dream, Rachel. What's up? I'm calling because I am in the process of changing career paths, mm-hmm. and I listen to your show all the time. I'm a huge fan, by the way. Oh, thank you. And Dave Ramsey. Thank you. Huge fan. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just, I've been actually really wanting to just get on the phone with you, and Good. I finally had the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> so what's so, up? Um, basically, what my, uh, my background is with work, um, I was working for an optometric practice in the optician area. My first six months on the job became a manager. This was about four years back. Um, I hosted their best trunk show in 33 years. The practice did really, really well. Unfortunately, due to everything that happened with COVID, um, they went out of business okay. post-COVID. Okay. So everybody lost their position there. Okay. Um, well, moving forward, I am looking for I, I loved the I loved the fashion. I loved working with the patients. I liked the fast pace of it. Okay. But I'm looking for something where I could earn more because opticians don't make enough for me. Okay. How much more do we want? How much do you more do you want to earn? 
Um, I would say at least, uh, at least where I where I was at, I was at a, a family owned. It wasn't, you know, I, I there are opportunities to earn more if I were to move to go corporate. Right. Um, so how much more? However, I am I'm not licensed. I could run a store though, or manage right. a so, medical no. But what I'm trying I've to do a couple of ways with this, but right. But I'm, I'm really tr- looking for your input. I, yeah, and here's my input. You need to simplify this. Okay. You know what you loved about being an optician. So let's remove optician because you feel like you're limited in that career space. Okay. And career track, mm-hmm. which I agree with mm-hmm. you. You probably are. I think you know what you're talking about. What I'm saying is, is you're what, right. what do you love about being an optician? It's the service. It's the forward facing contact with, with patients, caretaking, um, encouraging them, helping them get what they need. You're a part of solving a really pro- a really important problem for them. That's what you love. Mm-hmm. I'm generalizing that, but that's true. Okay, that's so what correct. you do and is... also picking off all of the eyewear. I, I did like the fashion aspect of it as well, but also, yeah, perfect. both the aesthetic right. and the medical. Right, so, yeah. so here's what you do. I just started the list making for you, but I want you to truly write it out. Type it up on your phone, your computer, I don't care. And you go, this is what I love most about what I've been doing. Now I'm just looking for opportunities and locations to do this kind of work where I can make more money. And what's the number? And so you simplify this. You go, there are multiple places in this economy to where I can do that right there. And now I've just created my own job description. So then when you go out and start looking You've already written your job description and you're clear and thus you're confident. So when you read a job description, you go, does this match up? Ding, ding, ding. Or eh, make sense? It makes perfect sense. And, and I've then, been applying and I've, um, you know, I've had LinkedIn premium for months and I've had, you know, not really too much with that. Just on LinkedIn learning, just kind of just keeping my brain sharp. Good. Um, but in terms of, the applicant tracking system, I have to say, we need to come up with a better plan there, whomever whomever that, that person is, you know? Right. I get it. And I get the technology <laughs> stuff. But here's my point. You have to take control of this and say, what are the things that I know I want to do here? And I've identified them. And I'm not just going to apply. I'm going to make connections. And I'm going to make sure that I've already got the qualifications before I apply. I'm going to walk Ken Stages out. You've been listening to the show for a while. Get clear is what I think we need some better ideas, not just kind of kind of ideas. Let's get some really clear ideas, get clear, get qualified. Are you qualified? Get connected. That's really, truly, before we even start to apply, we're looking for connections so that once we apply and we go in the applicant tracking system, and I get it, I've talked about this, 10 million candidates weren't even noticed last year, according to an article I saw. I can't remember where the source was, but I read it. And so I get that. So that's why you don't just rely on Submitting a resume, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. What's out there? Go look and see. Put yourself out there. Let them go work for you. You're not putting all your eggs in their basket anyway. So I I think you've been listening to the show long enough to go, okay, I'm here. I got to probably get some clearer ideas and then start moving along the path. You matter. You have what it takes, everybody. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Press on. 